rhinos and elephants are mega herbivores. They are incredibly important for the landscape because they are bioarchitects. They are geoformers. White and black rhino have been here for millions of years on Earth, long before hominids ever were even a blip on the landscape. And their presence here is important because under them, as an ambassador mega herbivore, so a cascade of life that flourishes underneath them because of their very existence. What we're doing here today is a series of a few days work where we are treating 20 live animals with isotopes. The whole concept was born one day when Professor James Larkin from WITS came to the Waterberg. I happened to be at the same place at the same time. We had a conversation. He said, what do you think about putting nuclear tech into rhino horns? And I'm like, hmm, not a bad idea. It's the first time now that we're injecting the rhino horn, uh, a live rhino, um, uh, with, with this radioactive material into its horn. Up until now it's just been a lot of testing, uh, testing to get the right dosage, the right type of radioactive material, ensure that the animal itself is not going to be impacted in any negative way. Uh, so that required a relatively low dose of, of radioactive material, but it had to be high enough that it could can be detected if a rhino horn is going to be trafficked, say, through an, a, uh, an, uh, a security system at the airport, but also high enough that it renders the uh, horn itself poisonous for human consumption. process I would say is uh, fairly non-invasive. I mean you might think well you're injecting radioactive materials into the horn and, and the, this is in, invasive but fundamentally the you know the dosage is low, the animal is not impacted, the environment's not impacted but it, it, it achieves the, 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 the effect of, of, of what we're trying to achieve. 